Hello class, today we are going to talk about algebraic reasoning and this is going to get us more into proofs and what we're going to do is we're looking at properties of algebra improving things, things that you've been doing for years really, we're just going to back it up step by step by step and that's all this is. So most of this should be pretty simple, pretty much review kind of things, so let's just jump into it. Uh, Algebraic properties of equality first. Now, we want A, B, and C to be real numbers because nobody wants to deal with imaginaries. That would be annoying. But anyways, so what we have here, first one, addition property of equality. What this says is that if A equals B, then A plus B equals B plus C. All right. So if you have two an equation, you can add something to both sides of the equation, and your equation is still equal. That's what this says. So, for example, if you have x minus 3 equals 5, then you can add 3 to both sides, and your equation is still equal. Right? We already knew that. We knew that if we have an equation, we have the same thing to both sides of the equation, that our equation is still going to be equal. We've been doing this for years. It's just this is the property that says we can do it. Same kind of thing with subtraction property of equality. I can subtract the same thing from both sides of my equation, and my equation is still going to be equal. Right? If you have x plus 2 equals 5, I can add 2, I can subtract the 2 from both sides, and it works. If you subtract the same thing from both sides of the equation, it's equal. We've been doing that for years, right? Multiplication property of equality, same thing. I can multiply both sides of the equation by the same thing, and the equation is still going to be equal. All right, now, this specifies that c doesn't equal 0, because if you multiply by 0, what happens to your equation? Technically, it still works, because now you have 0 equals 0, right? 0 does equal 0, so we're good. So, but it's very, very useless. You know. Division property of equality, if A equals B, then A divided by C equals B divided by C. You can divide both sides by the same thing. 2x equals 10, you can divide both sides of the equation by 2, and you end up with x equals 5, and it still equals, it still works. Provided, of course, that c doesn't equal 0. Now, here it really can't, because if you remember, you cannot divide by 0. It is undefined. It blows things up. It's no good. Your compute calculator will yell at you, and don't do it. All right. And again, all of these we've been doing for years. All right. Substitution property of equality. If a equals b, then a can be substituted for b, or b for a, in any equation or expression. What this is saying is that if you know that x equals 5, then anywhere in your equation you have an x, you can put a 5 in there. We've been doing that for years, right? Just plug it in. That's what we're usually talking about. Technical term, substitution. All, this, all of this stuff here, all of this, you've been doing for years. It's just now you're getting a technical term, an actual property that says you're allowed to do that, and it works, and it's all good. All right? Same thing with this next one. Distributive property. All right, everybody remembers the distributive property. I can just take this, and I can just distribute it in, and I end up with a times b plus a times c. Same thing with, with difference. Distributive property of differences. All right, I can just distribute that a in, I end up with a times b minus a times c. Been doing that for years. Nothing new. All right, these next three kind of sort of new. Kind of sort of self-explanatory and not a real big deal. Reflexive property, and we actually will use these a lot, okay? Reflexive property of equality is how it is. Reflexive property of equality. For numbers, A equals A. I know, that is like super, super simplistic, and why do they even need a property that says that a number equals itself? But apparently they do. Uh, a is equal to A. Because it would be very confusing if 5 sometimes did not equal 5, right? 5 equals 5. 4 equals 4. Segment lengths. The length of segment AB is the length of segment AB. The measure of angle A equals the measure of angle A. You wouldn't think we'd have to say that, but sometimes we have to say that. All right. These, a little bit more useful. If A, symmetric property. What we're doing here, if A equals B, then B equals A. Notice all that happened is we changed the order around. And we actually do this a lot when you're working out problems and you end up with something like 5 equals x, but you want the x to go first, and so you rewrite it as x equals 5. 
that's fine. This is just the symmetric property that says you're allowed to do that. All right. Again, you'd be surprised how often we do these things. All right. And it works with segment lengths, works with angle length measures, because those are just numbers, right? The length, the measurement is just a number, five inches, four degrees, whatever. Transitive property. Now, this one's a little bit more, but not much, and it's still pretty simple. If A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. All right. Same thing with segments. What this is saying, if A and C are both equal to B, then they must equal each other. That's what this says. All right. So if X equals 5 and Y equals 5, then X and Y equal each other. Kind of what that's saying. All right. Not a big deal. And this one we use a lot. Okay. Let's take a look at this. We're going to break this down a little bit. All right. Okay, so let's move down a bit. What we're going to do, we're going to solve this equation step by step by step by step, and we're going to write our justification for each step. All right? So, for example, we start off with 2 times x plus 3 minus 5 equals 5x plus 4. That's where we start. That was the equation we're given, and so we just write our equation. All right? Now, the next thing we're going to do... Well, let's see. They got this line here. How did they come up with this line? Well, that's they just distributed the 2 into the parentheses, right? And so how do you know we're allowed to do that? Because as we saw on the front of this, we have the distribution property, right? So that's what we're going to write down, distribution property. Distribution property. All right, so let's see. What did they do next? They went from this line to that line. The only thing that changed, let's see, 6 minus 5 turned into plus 1. So that is just simplifying. And we don't have a property on there for this, but that's, we're just going to put simplify. Simplify. All right, so what did they do next? They have this minus 2x that showed up on both sides. So how do we do that? What says that we can subtract 2x from both sides of the equation? Well, that would be subtraction property of equality. I can subtract c, whatever, something, from both sides, and it stays the same. So subtraction property of equality. Subtraction. I'm going to abbreviate property of equality. Okay, and what do they do next? Well, they can see the 2x's minus 2x canceled out, and 5x minus 2x turned into a 3x, right? And that is simplification. Combine like terms, right? If you want to write combine like terms, you can do that. That works. But this is simplify. Okay, so what do we do next? What do they do? They have a minus 4 popped up over here. Where did that come from? Well, they minus 4 over here, right? Because they want to subtract that 4, so minus 4 to both sides. Subtraction property again, right? Because we're subtracting. Subtract. Property of equality. All right, and then what do they do? Well, their 1 minus 4 turned into a negative 3, and their 4 minus 4 canceled out and went away, so this is, again, simplifying. Combine like terms. And then what do they do? Well, we want to get x by itself, right? So we divide by 3 on both sides. So division property of equality. property of equality. And then what? Well, negative 3 divided by 3 is negative 1, so we just simplify it again. That's all this is. And then we don't like it like that. We want it to look like this. So what property is it that says we can flip the order around? 
It's not reflexive. I know a lot of people want to say reflexive. It's not. It is symmetric, symmetric property. Because if I draw a line right here, I have AB, A equals B, B equals A. So it looks like a mirror image, right? And that's what symmetry is. So this is the symmetric property of equality. I always misspell that. That has two M's. Symmetric. Yeah. Symmetric property of equality. There we go. And there it is. So this is just a simple math, same stuff you've been doing for years. It's just we're backing up every single statement with a reason. What reason, what property says that we are allowed to do that, right? Okay, so let's flip it over. And what we're going to do here, there we go. You reflect the beam of a spotlight off a mirror lying flat on the stage, right? As shown. We want to determine whether or not the measure of angle DBA. So D is right here. It's a little hard to see. You know, we'll just do this. All right. So we have D is right there. E is right there. Okay. That's better. So angle DBA equals the measure of angle EBC. So DBA, EBC. So DBA, that's two and three put together. EBC is two and one put together. All right? So, hmm. Fortunately, that has worked out for us. We know the measure of angle one equals the measure of angle three. Okay? How do we know that? Well, it's marked. They're congruent, right? Explanation, we will put in this. This is marked in the diagram. Marked in diagram. Now, the reason we're going to put down for this is that it is given to us. All right, so our reason here is given. All right, we were given that information. How do we know that's true? Because we were told it's true. It's in the paper, on the thing. Okay, so let's see here. We want to know something, though, about DBA. One and three, that's not what we want to talk about. We want to talk about DBA, right? Well... We know, saw a minute ago that DBA is angle 2 and angle 3 put together, right? So we're going to say that. How do we know that this is true? What are we going to do here? All uh, right. Well, they're adjacent angles, right? And so since they're adjacent angles, we can add the measures. So that's what I'm going to say here. Add the measures of adjacent angles. But that's a lot of that. We're going to be doing this a lot. And how do you know that we can add the measures of adjacent angles? Well, if you'll remember, a couple videos back, we talked about the angle addition postulate. And it says that you can add the measures of adjacent angles to get the measure of the whole big thing. So what we're going to write down here is angle addition postulate. Like so. Ah. Okay, so, hmm, what can I do? So we've got the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 2. What do I know about either one of those? Well, I do know that the measure of angle 1 equals the measure of angle 3, right? So if they equal, if you have two things that are the same thing, then you can use them interchangeably. So I could take the measure of angle 3 out and put the measure of angle 1 in. So what I'm going to do is I substituted, substitute the measure of angle one for the measure of angle three. How do I know I can do that? What says that I can do that? Well, that was right down here. Where'd it go? Do, 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 do. Substitution property of equality. If two things equal each other, then one can be used interchangeably for the other. The measure of angle 1 equals the measure of angle 3, so I can use them interchangeably. This is the substitution property.
substitution property of equality. Huh. All right. Well, let's see, that's one and two now, right? Measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two. If you notice, we still need to say something about EBC, but that is EBC, isn't it? Angle one and angle two together is EBC. So the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two equals EBC. Those are adjacent angles, so we can add them together. So add measure of adjacent angles. Measure is plural. Adjacent angles. How do we know we can add the measure of adjacent angles? We already talked about that. That is the angle addition postulate. Angle addition, and I'm going to abbreviate postulate as post postulate. Da, da, da. All right, so let's look at this. We have the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two is the measure of angle, wait a second, measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two, we have that right there, don't we? These two are the same. And so I have the measure of angle DBA equals this stuff right here. The measure of one and two equals measure of angle EBC. So both of these angles is equal to the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two. And as we said, what is it if two things are both equal to the same thing, then they are equal to each other. Same right here. Two things, are, two angles are both equal to the same angle, and those two angles are equal to each other. All right, so since they're both equal to measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two, then we can just say they're equal to each other. So. Both angles equal or equal to are equal to measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two, and this is the transitive property of equality. Transitive property of Equality, equality. There we go. Ah, so as you see, most of this simple stuff. All right, just a review. Algebraic reasoning. All right, step by step by step. Back it up with a property or a definition every single step. Okay, all it is. Here, we're doing this geometrically, so we don't actually have numbers that we're looking for. We're just doing it a little bit more abstract, just doing it geometrically. And so, there's that. And we're using properties of equality for this, okay? Every statement we have over here has to be backed up with some kind of postulate or some kind of property over here. And this is getting us into the geometric proofs, which can be a little bit more complicated, but it's still not too bad. Huh? Anyways, hope you found this useful, and I'll see you in the next video.